Hi, it's Matt here for Newshooter.com at IBC 2017. I'm with Sean from Lightgear. Now, this is Project Star. Stardust, yeah. Stardust. Stardust, yeah. Bit of Bowie there. Yeah, a little bit of Bowie. Yeah, hopefully as colorful as Bowie. Yeah. <laughs> and so what is it exactly? Um, for, for us, it's uh, it's our first big step more into the multicolor world that is kind of taking the world by storm right now and as far as lighting goes. Um, but what it is is for us, it's our first color space compliant fixture, meaning that we're trying to be a bit more camera centric as opposed to what, the, what your gaffer is seeing or what your DP is seeing with their eyes, but more now what they're seeing at the monitor. So that's, in a nutshell, that's what it is. Um, a bit more into it where when you were, it's a fully white fixture, you know, because most of the time I'd say you're probably shooting white light, you know, if, if, on a feature commercial TV. Um, but as people now are... So, to, so people may not understand what white light is, what, what, what is white light? Well, white light, um, you know, it sounds simple, but uh, the camera sees, you have to set the camera as white balance settings so that it knows what properly exposed white light is. Because uh, if your camera is set to see 3200 Kelvin white light, then anything that deviates from that will have a shade or a tint to it. So um, I think a fundamental understanding of what the camera thinks white light is, is what this is trying to address. Um, but for us, um, we, as far as compared to our other fixtures go, we've extended the color range, the Kelvin temperature range here. So it goes 2,000 Kelvin on the low end to around 11,000 Kelvin on the high end. But um, as far as the color science is concerned, there's a little curve, uh, and that's called the Planckian curve. Um, and as when you mix two colors, uh, it's a straight line. It's a linear relationship. But what we've done is we've actually used uh, the multicolor chips, so red, green, blue, and amber, to keep you along that Planckian curve so that when you go from 2,000 to 11,000, it doesn't get a shift that maybe appears more magenta on camera or appears more green. Now we will have plus and minus green correction built into this product, uh, just because, again, based on the camera, you're in so many different situations uh, that you will, you'll kind of need to be able to change those things on the fly very quickly. Um, but the idea is hopefully that we've taken a lot of that guesswork and setup out of it so that when you mix to 2,700 Kelvin white, you're getting a very high quality, full spectrum, true, not too magenta, not too green, 2700 Kelvin light. And I believe you're working on a system here so you'll be able to actually tailor the light to particular camera sensors because all camera sensors are slightly different and they react differently to, to, yeah. to various lights. So you'll be able to actually tell the system, hey, I'm using this particular sensor yeah. and it will adjust the light accordingly. That's, that's certainly the idea because uh, you know each camera and each camera manufacturer has their own secret sauce or their own special formula for the, their color science. So when you go from a red dragon to an Arri Alexa, uh, what you, one, what you look at and think is red is going to not look red maybe on both of those things. And then certainly when you find what works for the, the red dragon, uh, that may that may work, but when you take it to the Alexa, it's not going to at all look red. So the idea for us, hopefully, is that within the first or second version of, of this fixture, um, you'll be able to go ahead, go up to it and actually say, OK, Airy Alexa. And now we will have you know, spent, hopefully, many hours uh, actually thinking about what red for the Airy Alexa is. So we're going to get a DITN, get all these cameras in, and actually tailor the output, skew it right out, right out of the gate, so that when you mix to red, don't care about what you're looking at on the fixture, look at the monitor and pull up red. And now it'll look red, hopefully, yeah, for that for that particular camera. Now this is still very much a, a prototype sort of thing that you're showing here. When, when do you yeah. expect uh, something to come to market? Um, that answer may vary depending on who you ask, but um, I'm hopeful that by a, uh, NAB show in Vegas next year, so around April, will be deliverable, or at least, at least fully launched. Um, later this year we'll get some testing and, and all that at the end of this year, but um, uh, check back at LDI this November, and I hope that we'll have a fully kind of working prototype with the UI and all that. Um, but I'd say er early to mid next year is uh, probably realistic. Yeah. Thanks very much. Of course, yeah. Thank you.